BJP on Thursday hit back at the Congress party over the issue of Pegasus spyware. The Supreme Court appointed technical committee has observed that there is no conclusive proof of use of Pegasus in 29 mobile phones examined by the technical committee. Addressing the press, senior BJP leader Ravi Shankar Prasad said, The high-profile technical committee consisting of eminent people of technology has not found any Pegasus virus in any of the 29 mobiles submitted for the examination. He added, it was a motivated campaign and far from the truth. It was an attempt by Rahul Gandhi and Congress party to weaken and defame PM Modi. A Supreme Court appointed committee which probed the security breach during Prime Minister Narendra Modi's visit to Punjab in January this year has found that the Firozpur SSP failed to discharge his duty though sufficient force was available. The Apex Court said on Thursday that it will send the report of the five-member committee headed by former SC Judge Indu Malhotra to the Centre for Appropriate Action. Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Thursday addressed a national labour conference of labour ministers of all states and union territories via video conferencing. Speaking on the occasion, he said, India's labour force will play a vital role in fulfilling our dreams of Amrit Kaal. Various schemes aimed at the upliftment of those working in the organised and unorganised sectors will help in strengthening the labour force in India. In last eight years, we have brought labour reforms and removed imperialistic and regressive labour laws. Union Home Minister Amit Shah on Thursday reviewed security and development work in Jammu and Kashmir in a high-level meeting in New Delhi, as per media reports. The meeting was attended by NSA Ajit Doval, Union Home Secretary Ajay Bhalla, Army Chief Manoj Pandey, JNK LG Manoj Sinha, Raw Chief Samant Goel and others. This is the first high-level meeting on JNK security situation to be chaired by Amit Shah post-successful completion of Amar Nath Yatra. A terrorist captured by the Indian Army along the LOC in JNK and undergoing treatment at a facility of the Army in Kashmir has said that he had been sent on a suicide mission by a colonel of the Pakistani Army. As per media reports, the terrorist has been identified as Tabarak Hussain. He is said to have told the security agencies that he had come along with four or five other men and had been given Rs 30,000 by Pakistan's Colonel Yunus to target the Indian Army. The security forces on Thursday killed three infiltrators along the line of control in North Kashmir's Baramulla district. Also, two associates of terrorists, namely Yusuf Wani and Manzoor Shah, were arrested in Bandipura. Three pistols, three pistol magazines and five hand grenades have been recovered from them, as per the Kashmir Zone Police. The BJP on Thursday appointed Bhupendra Singh, Minister of Panchayati Raj in the Uttar Pradesh government and a member of the Legislative Council as UP State Chief. He is from Western UP's Jat community. Singh replaces Swatantra Dev Singh as State Chief. The India Meteorological Department said on Thursday that more than 20 states, including Uttar Pradesh, Bihar and Madhya Pradesh, may witness heavy rainfall in the coming days. The weather agency has predicted widespread to moderate rainfall with thunderstorms in several states due to the cyclonic circulation that lies over South Jharkhand and neighbourhood. The department has also predicted rainfall over Jammu and Kashmir and Himachal Pradesh. Moreover, Karnataka, Telangana, Kerala and Tamil Nadu may also witness widespread rainfall with thunderstorms in the next five days. After the Russia-Ukraine war began in February this year, India for the first time voted against Russia during a procedural vote at the United Nations Security Council on Ukraine. India joined other members of the Council to vote for inviting Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky to speak via a remote video link. New Delhi had so far abstained at the UNSC on Ukraine. Meanwhile, India has repeatedly called upon the Russian and Ukrainian sides to return to the path of diplomacy and dialogue. 
Even as the Russia-Ukraine war entered its seventh month, 25 people are reported to have died in a Russian strike at a Ukrainian railway station in Chaplino and a residential area in East Ukraine. Reacting to it, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said, Chaplino is our pain. Meanwhile, Zelensky has vowed that Ukraine will fight to the end.